Hey everyone, we're going to get started in about a minute, but you want to make sure that you have a calculator open, whether it's the Desmos calculator or some other calculator. Hey, here we go. Let's get started. Thank you guys for chatting with me in the chat. It makes me so happy. I'm Hamid. <laughs> All right, we're going to get started with today's lesson. You can find today's lesson in OMHS under today's date in Unit 8. Well, that rhymes. I didn't mean to do that. Um, <laughs> at least it's not the 8th, huh? All right, so Unit 8, 2, 9, 22. Today is Day 3 Notes. You also need a calculator for today. I highly recommend the Desmos calculator, but if you have some other calculator there, that will work for today, I suppose, just as long as you have a sine, cosine, and tangent button. And you'll see what I mean in a minute or so. But I recommend the Desmos calculator. Um, you also want to make sure that you have your Unit 7 test complete by the end of this week. Um, you're going to want to make sure that's done because it'll be entered as zeros for any missing tests for Unit 7. And if you haven't done the unit six test, you would definitely want to get on that. We're about midway through quarter three um, and students that have really low grades seem to be the ones that are missing tests. Not every single one, but for the most part, if you have a really low grade, there's a good chance you're missing a test. So make sure that you get that unit six and unit seven test in there. Um, are the grades updated in the gradebook? As updated as they can be right now. So all unit seven quizzes will turn into zeros by the end of this week. Unit six tests and quizzes have already, that's already happened too. And then usually on Friday afternoons, I try to, or Wednesday afternoons, I try to enter zeros for any missing attendance quizzes and exit tickets. So it should be as up to, up to date as it can be at this moment. Yeah, not a problem. Okay, so here we are. We're going through the day three notes in unit eight. Okay, this is my favorite lesson, by the way. Don't tell the other lessons, they'll get jealous. <laughs> I just love trigonometry. Okay, it's one of my favorites. Um, and a lot of times when we start this, students ask me, well, what is trigonometry, Mrs. Grandy? Like, what is it? Trigonometry is the study of triangle measurements. There's just so much stuff about triangles to know that we have a whole study on it. Okay, and in geometry, we are going to cover just kind of the bare bones basics of trigonometry. There is a lot more to trig than what we're going to cover in this class. We're just going to do the, the very basics. Okay. There's actually whole classes called trig or pre-calculus where you would use even more trig. <clears throat> um, I know sometimes when I taught an honors algebra class, we did a little bit of trig in that too, on um, honors algebra too. Oh, Zorin. <laughs> okay, we're going to cover the three functions, the three main functions in trig, and they are called sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine is abbreviated S-I-N. Okay, so even though you see S-I-N there, you're still going to say the word sine. Cosine is abbreviated C-O-S, and tangent is abbreviated T-A-N. Okay, and they each represent a different ratio. The sine is the ratio of the leg opposite the angle to the hypotenuse. The cosine is the ratio of the leg adjacent to the angle to the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the ratio of the leg opposite the angle to the leg adjacent to the angle. All of those have something in common. You have to know what the angle is, right? So when doing this, I'm going to go ahead and do all of these that have angle A, and then we'll go back and do angle B. So for angle A, I'm going to go ahead and put an arc on angle A. You can't label any of the sides unless you know what angle you're talking about. So once I know the angle, I can figure out what side is opposite that angle. 
So the side that's opposite that angle or the side that's not touching it would be here, lowercase a. So I'm going to go ahead and put little OPP for opposite. The leg that is touching that angle, we call that the adjacent side. And of course, the longest side of a right triangle is, of course, the hypotenuse. That's not new to anybody. <clears throat> so the sine of angle A says that you're going to make a fraction of opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite here is lowercase a. And hypotenuse, well, that was lowercase c. So this is a fraction, lowercase a over c. Where did I get sine? Right here? It's a definition. It's like a vocabulary word. Okay, let's go down to um, cosine. Okay, so cosine of A. Cosine is an adjacent over a hypotenuse. So here in my picture, the adjacent is lowercase b. The hypotenuse is still lowercase c. And then tangent, tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite here is lowercase a. And the adjacent was lowercase b. And I knew that lowercase a was opposite because that's the leg that's not touching the angle. And the leg that is touching the angle is the adjacent. So remember, adjacent means like they share a side or they're touching. My office is adjacent to my daughter's bedroom because they share a wall. Okay. Now let's talk about angle B. So I'm going to have to actually change my labels because I'm changing the angle. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, on my notes, I just used different colors to avoid confusion right here in class. I'm just going to erase this and we're going to talk about angle B. Okay, so we'll use blue. So put an arc on angle B. You could use a different color if you want. Sometimes students like to label the hypotenuse first. And maybe that'll help. So we'll go ahead and label the hypotenuse first. Here you go. That's always the so longest side, always the side across from the angle. Now the leg that is not touching the angle that you have labeled there, that's opposite. And the leg that is touching the angle, that's adjacent. The leg that's adjacent is touching, the angle is touching the leg. Rachel, I just don't think I understand what you typed there. <laughs> it's okay. Did that help? Did my explanation there help though? You have an angle. The hypotenuse, of course, is the longest side. The side not touching your angle is opposite. The side that is touching the angle the leg that is touching the angle is the adjacent. And then once you have those labeled, now you can write your fractions. The sine of angle B is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite here is lowercase b and the hypotenuse is c. The cosine of B is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So adjacent here is lowercase a and the hypotenuse, well, that's still c. And then the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So that's lowercase b over lowercase a. It, so the angles can't be adjacent to sides. Well, no, sorry, sides can't be. So let me read this again. Isn't angle A also adjacent to the hypotenuse? Yes, angle A is adjacent to the hypotenuse, but it's the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is never going to change. It's got to be the longest. So the other one, the one that it's touching, is the adjacent. It's the adjacent leg, really. The, adjacent, the leg that's adjacent. So when we're talking about opposite and adjacent sides, we're talking about legs, not hypotenuses. Let's label another one. <laughs> Rachel, you were doing, I can tell you were doing the honor stuff. 
<laughs> All right. Here's how you can help remember your ratios. Okay, I like to remember it with this phrase called Sokotoa. Sounds like a, like a Native American chant, right? Sokotoa. And the reason I do that is because I can write it like this. So ka toa. It helps me remember that sign, the S, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine, that C, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent, the capital T there, is the opposite over the adjacent. So if you can remember so ka toa, that will help you remember each of the fractions that go with each function. So, Muhammad, be careful. These are, e these are all fractions. So the sign isn't equal to just one side. It's equal to the ratio of a side over a side. Let's do this example. Maybe this will help. Okay. So in number one, I'm going to work with all of my A's first. So we're going to do sine A, cosine A, tangent A. Go ahead and put an arc on angle A. That's the angle that you're working with. Label your hypotenuse. The hypotenuse here has to be 13. You can label it as an H. You can label it as HYP for hypotenuse. It's a hypotenuse. Now you're going to label your O and your A. The O is the opposite leg. So here's angle A. Here's angle A. Opposite, the opposite leg is the leg that's not touching it, 5. So go ahead and put an O right there. Okay, leaving you with the only thing that can be left is the adjacent side. And the adjacent side is the leg touching your angle that's not the hypotenuse. So I'll put an A here. Yeah, Rachel, you got it. So now we can write our fractions. Sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of A is equal to the side that's opposite over the hypotenuse, 5 over 13. There you go. Good job, Mohi. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side was 12, and the hypotenuse is 13. And then the tangent of A. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite was 5, and the adjacent is 12. Okay. Um, Jalen, that's a really good question. Jalen says, should we simplify these fractions? Absolutely, if they simplify. These ones don't simplify. But if you do get fractions that simplify, you should absolutely simplify them. Very good question. Yay. You read my mind. I love it. Okay, let's talk about angle C. On my notes key, you're just going to see that I used different colors. I'm just going to erase it so we don't get confused. Okay, let's use red. Okay, so angle C. Step one, put an arc on your angle. The hypotenuse hasn't changed. The hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side. But now the opposite side has changed because this is the angle now, angle C. The leg that's not touching it is opposite. Yes, very good. Very good, Mohin. Yes. And so the adjacent is the leg that's touching the angle. So now for sine C, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that becomes your 12 over 13. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 5 over 13. And the tangent of angle C, well, that's opposite over adjacent, 12 over 5. Wonderful. Okay, now sometimes they get a little tricky on us. It's not that bad, really. But sometimes they'll give us a triangle, and it's missing a side. Oh, no. Um, oh, good question, Jalen. Jalen says, can I make these improper fractions? Um Leave them, leave them improper fractions. Don't give me any mixed numbers. Don't give me decimals. Just leave them this ugly simplified fraction. Yep. Someone wrote it in here. Rachel got it. Someone else wrote it. Who was it? Mohin got it. Yes. How would I find WX? We would use our friend Pythagoras. Isn't he a cool guy? 
Pythagoras says we can find that hypotenuse with our c squared equals a squared plus b squared. I'm going to let the hypotenuse be called h because eventually for my fractions, it's going to be an h anyway. So we can say that the hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. And in your type calculator, you can just type 9 squared plus 12 squared and you get 225. And then you square root both sides. Our hypotenuse here is the ever lovely 15. And at least it came out to be a pretty number. Yeah, Zorn, if you find that you already found the trick, then that's perfectly fine with me. I just don't like memorizing a lot of tricks. So I'm, I just do it every time. <clears throat> yep. So if you just if you can remember Soka Toa, then we'll be able to figure out all of these ratios. So let's do W first. Put an arc on W. Sine of W. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we need to know the opposite. Okay. Well, the leg that's not touching angle W is the opposite. The hypotenuse there was 15. So the sine of W becomes 12 over 15. But don't leave your answer 12 over 15. 12 over 15 is a really good place to start or almost finish, but that's not your answer. Got to simplify that. 12 over 15 simplifies to 4 fifths. So your final answer will be a 4 fifths. Cosine of W is adjacent over hypotenuse. Ah, well, that 9 is the leg touching the angle. That's the adjacent. So that becomes 9 over 15. Oh, but 9 over 15 reduces. So our final answer there is 3 fifths. Very nice. Rachel's just plowing away over there. Good job. <laughs> the tangent of W, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, opposite is 12 and adjacent is 9. So your final answer there is 4 thirds. Now let's talk about angle X. So I'm going to get rid of my A here, my arc and my O. Can you put an arc on angle X now? There it is. The hypotenuse hasn't changed. That's still the hypotenuse. The leg not touching the angle is the opposite. The leg that is touching the angle is your adjacent. So now for your sine, that's opposite over hypotenuse. And that reduces to 3 fifths. Your cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and that reduces to uh, 4 fifths. And your tangent is your opposite over adjacent, so 9 over 12. 9 over 12 reduces to 3 fourths. I love it. Yep, Mohin, that's probably why this is my favorite lesson. <clears throat> Rachel, yes, that's true. <laughs> um, there are some ways that you can relate these dunes. And my honor students, you guys are really clicking it because I'm guessing that you've been working through that honors content. Um, it's not something that we really have to memorize, though. So I don't want to confuse anyone more than I have to. But if you are recognizing the relationships between like the sine of W and the cosine of X, or the cosine of W and the sine of X, you are definitely on the right track. Yeah, you thought this was hard. It's not. I love it. All right, there's another example here, example three. I'm going to let this one be for you. You can um, definitely practice it. Check your answers on OMHS. I want to move on to how can we use this stuff to solve. All right. Before we can do that, though, you need a calculator and you need to make sure that you are in degree mode. So if you're using Desmos, let's make it Desmosy. Okay. You want to make sure that you're using the testing calculator. So test practice calculator and the geometry SOL, you get the graphing calculator. If you are using a different version of Desmos, I personally don't really care. Just know that this is what it looks like on the SOL. So you should definitely know how to use this calculator on the SOL. Because when you sit down to take that test, no one's going to be allowed to teach you how to use that calculator. 
Okay, if you want to double check to make sure you're in degree mode, you would go over here to the almost top right, you see a little wrench. When you click on it, at the bottom there you see radians and degrees. Okay, you can measure angles in a unit called radians. We're not really covering that in this class too much, a little bit in the honors, but really we are hitting degrees. That's what we want. So you want to make sure your calculator is in degree mode. On a Desmos calculator, degrees is already chosen for you, so you're good to go. If you're using a different calculator, a TI or a Casio, those do not reset right into degree mode. So you might want to do a quick little um, YouTube search, how to put my calculator in degree mode. Or if you want to email me, I can help you too. I've got all kinds of calculators here. I can tell you how to put it in degree mode. The thing is, though, if your calculator is in the wrong mode, it's going to give you the wrong answers. Okay, so just make sure you are in degree mode. All right, so that takes us to the calculator part. Now let's actually do some problems with it. And I didn't save any of my writing. That's so fun. The good news is every problem I'm about to show you, the setup is exactly the same. Okay, so if you can set it up, you're three quarters of the way there. Step one, put an arc on the acute angle that's labeled. So in number one, I'm going to put an arc on 28 degrees. If both acute angles are labeled, just pick one. Okay. Most of the time there's just one labeled. Occasionally, maybe they'll label both and you would just pick one and that's the one you're going to use. Step two, the given legs and hypotenuse are what you want to label. So label your sides either O, A, or H, and you're only labeling what's given to you. So this X, well that's going to be the opposite. So I'm going to put an O there. And the 19, that's the hypotenuse. Notice I did not label the adjacent side. Yes, that bottom leg is the adjacent side, but since there's no number there, I'm not going to label it. Then I'm going to look at my SOCATOA. And I want to pick the one that uses O and H. And the only one that uses O and H, yeah, there's Sybil, I was hoping you were here, is SO. Okay, so, so, oh my gosh, I'm getting this. <laughs> We're going to use sine, that S stands for sine. So you'll say sine of an angle equals a fraction. And now we put our numbers in. The, fra or the angle is 28. So I put the 28 in the parentheses. The fraction is opposite over hypotenuse. So I put X in the top because that was the opposite. 19 is the hypotenuse. <clears throat> Now, sine of 28 is a number. Gosh, it's an ugly number, but it's, an, it's a number. So if you type sine 28 into your calculator, sine parenthesis 28, that is an ugly number. I know beauty's in the eye of the beholder, but man, even I think it's ugly. I don't want to round it. As soon as I round it, I'm making my answer not accurate. So instead of rounding this thing, I'm just going to say sine 28. Okay, not a big deal. Let's go back to our notes. Oh, it saved at that time. Okay. Well, sine of 28 is a number. Uh, we learned that we can put any number over 1. And now we cross multiply. x times 1 is x. 19 times the sine of 28 19 times the sine of 28. And that is what you're going to type in your calculator. Now I will show you one of the biggest mistakes students make, so that way you would make sure you don't do that. Hold on one second. Share calculator. Okay, so we are going to type 19 times the sine of 28. And we had about 8.9. So those of you who are typing 8.9 in the chat, you were right. Here's a mistake that students make. They look at their cross multiplying and they go, oh yeah, sine of 28 times 19. So then they type this in their calculator and they get the wrong answer. Well, what's the difference? We know that multiplication is commutative. We know that three times five is the same as five times three. So why is this not working? 
Can anyone guess? Anyone guess why it's not working? Yeah, well, well he got it. Anyone else? It's not because Desmos hates us. <laughs> okay. Remember I said that the parent the angle has to go in the parentheses, right? Well, in this last step where I put the sine of 28 times 19, Desmos is reading 28 times 19 as the angle, but that's not the angle. The angle is 28. So if you want to type it in the calculator this way, use your parentheses and say only 28 is the angle there, calculator. And once you do that, now it gives you the right answer. Yeah. So if you don't use the parentheses, whatever comes after the sign, the calculator is reading that entire thing as the angle. But 28 times 19 wasn't the angle. Only 28 was the angle. So just put parentheses in. Or just type it the way I did here in step two. That's how I like to type it. That's how you'll always see me write it. Both ways are right. Just make sure that you are entering with your parentheses. And if you want to get used to putting parentheses here, that's probably a good idea too. Okay, so that was how to type the buttons on the calculator. We get 8.9. Okay, you're going to see me use the squiggly equal sign. Hopefully you've seen this before. Anyone know what that means? What's the squiggly equal sign mean? Does it mean Mrs. Grandy was dizzy? Yeah, it means about, almost. It means approximately. If you were watching uh, Jeopardy last night, there was actually a question on Jeopardy last night. I got it right. <laughs> okay, so that little squiggle equal sign just means approximately. It means, hey guys, I rounded this number. It didn't come out to be exactly 8.9. So if you see me with a squiggle equal sign on my notes, that's why. All right, let's do another practice problem. Let's look at number two. Number two, we have a right triangle, we have an angle 41, we have a 32, we have an X. So I'm going to put an arc on my angle 41. That X, well, that would be my, what do you think? What letter are you going to put there by X? Yeah, awesome. Ooh, Rachel writes the whole word opposite. Okay, I'm just going to put an O. Yep, O for opposite. 32 would be my, what do you think? What would 32 be? Ooh, I tricked some of you. Yeah, there it goes, Lauren. It's my adjacent, right? Because this dude right here, that would be the hypotenuse, but he's not labeled. I don't know why I made it a he. I don't know. Okay, so I have an O and an A. Here's my question to you. What would you use here? Would you use sine, cosine, or tangent? Go ahead and answer my poll for me. You have an O, you have an A. Sine, cosine, or tangent? Oh, Sybil, that would have been awful. <laughs> All right, thank you for nobody answering D. That makes me very happy. Just the 14 people who didn't answer anything. I'm a little concerned. All right, now we're down to 11. That's good. Anyone else before I reveal the answer? All right, cool. If you said C tangent, you are correct. Okay, so let's talk about why. Why is this tangent? We have an O, we have an A. So I'm looking at my SOHCAHTOA here, and I'm looking for the one that has just an O and an A. Sine has O and H. Cosine has A and H tangent. There's my O and my A. So that means we use the tangent button. So tangent of an angle equals a fraction. The angle we put in the parentheses. There it is. The fraction opposite over adjacent. X over 32. Tangent of 41 is a number. That's an ugly number, but it's a number. And we can put any number over 1. And once we do that, Boom, we are really good at cross multiplying at this point. X times one is X and tangent 41 times 32. You're gonna see me type it 32 times the tangent of 41. 
If you want to type tangent 41 times 32, just don't forget your parentheses around the 41. You should get x is approximately, yes, thank you guys, 27.8. Very nice. Very good. Okay, I'm going to leave those two there for you to practice. I want to show you how you might see this in a different way. Nope, before we do that, be the first class today where I remember to give the attendance word. <laughs> your attendance word today is degree. And your attendance word today is degree. Write that down, highlight it, circle it, do the hokey pokey, and then don't forget to do your attendance quiz. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let's look at how we might see this problem ever so slightly differently. The good news is the setup's exactly the same. Okay, so the setup is put an arc on the angle. Here we go. And it's the acute angle. Don't put an arc on the 90. That's not going to help you a whole lot. Then label your given sides, either O, A, or H, depending on what they are. So let's let's play pointer tools. Here's your pointer tools. Use your pointer tool. Can you point to the hypotenuse? Woohoo! All right, I'm gonna put an H there. Can you point to the opposite? Look at you all just kind of move. It reminds me like a Ouija board or something. Very good. And even though it's not labeled, can you point to the adjacent? Yeah. All those pretty colored arrows. Nice. Okay. Now I'm not going to label the adjacent because there's no number there. So we have an O and an H. Okay. So think about your Sokatoa. Make sure you're spelling it right. Sokatoa. Hmm. Which one are you going to use? So, ka or toa, sine, cosine, or tangent. <laughs> Very nice. We're getting more and more correct answers. Good. All right, let's see. If you said that you were going to use sine, you are correct. If you didn't say sine, let's talk about it for just a moment so we make sure you get the right stuff. You have an O and an H. Make sure that you are writing your Soka Toa correctly. Sometimes students misspell it. How could you misspell my crazy phrase? <laughs> there it is. If you need to write it on the top of your paper, you're definitely allowed to do that. So I keep using the word so. You never realize how much you use the word so until you're teaching this lesson. O and H. Here it is. So we're using sign. Sine of, a, of the angle equals a fraction. The angle here is 33. The fraction is 15 over x. Interesting. Yeah, I saw some of you type in there. Um, This is different. Yep, this is different. But remember that sine 33, it's a number. It's just a really ugly number. Sorry, sine 33. You're not very pretty but we can still use it. We're going to cross multiply. 15 times 1 is 15. x times the sine of 33 is x times the sine of 33. Okay. Hmm. We need to solve for x. For a moment, pretend that I gave you this equation. What would you do to solve for x? 15 equals x times 3. What would you do? Yep. Good job, Sybil. Yep. You would divide both sides by three, right? Miss Grandy, that's a silly question. Why did you ask us that? Well, whenever you have a number that you're multiplying by x and you want x by itself, you divide both sides by that number. That makes that cancel out. And now you get x equals 15 over 3. Well, sine of 33 is a number. It's just ugly. We're going to divide both sides by the sine of 33.
That'll make these dudes cancel, leaving us with just x. And we have 15 divided by sine 33. That is what you type in your calculator. So many students I see, well, I have seen, write this correctly on their paper, but still type it wrong in their calculator. So just make sure that you are typing it into your calculator correctly. So we're going to type 15 divided by sine parenthesis 33. We get 27.5. Okay, okay, where did we go? 27.5. Let's do one more example like this. All right, number six. And you are welcome to go forward in the steps if you know what you're doing. 15 is over x now because the variable is the hypotenuse. So they won't always give you the hypotenuse. They might make that what you're looking for. Or, you know, if you had to tangent, maybe it would be the adjacent that's missing. They just picked a different side to be missing, and you just happen to be unlucky to have to put that in the bottom. It's just one extra step. And luckily, the setup is the same. So in number six, I'm going to put an arc on 43. I'm going to label the x and the 36. Well, that x is the hypotenuse. Yep, Mohin's reading my mind at this point. And the 36 is the adjacent. Okay, so we look, so ka, toa, I'm looking for the one that uses a and h. Hmm, a and h, that would be cosine. So we say cosine of an angle equals a fraction. The angle is 43. The fraction is adjacent over hypotenuse. Bum, bum, bum. We can do it. Put a 1 in your denominator. Cross, multiply. 36 times 1. x times the cosine of 43. Yep. Cosine 43 is a number. I need to get it away from the x. And the only way to undo multiply is divide it. So I'm going to divide both sides by the cosine of 43. These cosines will cancel, leaving me with just an x. And I'm going to type 36 divided by the cosine of 43 into my calculator. Where am I here? Number six. What do we get? 49.2. Yes. Good job. OK. So, so far, we've seen an example where x is in the numerator. That was easy, just cross multiply. We saw we see x in the denominator. We still cross multiply, <laughs> but then we have to divide to get x by itself. Not a big deal. How did you do that in the calculator? Sure, I'd love to show you. Let me share my screen again here. So you would type, where was I? 36. And then you can hit the division button on your computer keyboard, or if you click this little keyboard at the bottom, there's a division symbol right there. You can use that. And then I'm going to type, we're dividing by the cosine. So you can type the COS, or you could go to functions and click cosine, either way. And then parenthesis 43. There you go. And as long as you're in degree mode, you'll get the right answer. If you type that exactly the way I did, but you have a different number, you're probably in the wrong mode. Absolutely, I'm happy to help. Okay, let's look. The next problem. All right, the next type of problem is what happens? We're going to come back to those word problems if we have a time. What happens if the variable is the angle this time? Hmm. Yeah, Rachel, it does make a difference in radians. All right. Will the SOL try to trick you with different degrees? No, it'll always be. Um, you just want to make sure you're in degree mode, and then you'll be fine. All right. So now the variable is the angle. Oh, my goodness, Miss Grandy. The good idea, the good news, 
The setup is the same. Put an arc on the angle. Not that the angle's X, but you can still put an arc on it. Label the sides that are there, either O, A, or H. So let's see. Um, 24, that's the hypotenuse, and 15 would be opposite. It's the leg not touching the angle. <laughs> if I knew the secrets of the universe, Rachel. <laughs> All right, now's the question. Sine, cosine, tangent. Ooh, look at you guys in the chat. Sine, cosine, tangent. I've got an O, I've got an H. If you need to write Sokatoa somewhere, be my guest. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm looking for the one with O and H. That would be sine. If you said sine in the chat, thank you so much. So the sine of the angle equals a fraction. Now, this is where we get a little different because our angle is the variable. The fraction is opposite over hypotenuse. Now, we got to figure out how can we get x out of there? x is trapped in the parentheses. You can't just divide by just sine, right? Sine is like the function. It has to be a sine of a number. So how can I free the x? Well, here's what we're going to do. Where are we? <clears throat> Have you ever heard the word inverse before? Inverse is what undoes something. So the inverse of divide is, what do you think? What's the inverse of dividing? Multiplying, they undo it. The inverse of addition would be subtraction. Very good. Oh, here's one. The inverse of a square, like x squared, would be, Sybil got it. Katie got it. Alex, yes, square root, right? It's what undoes it. So what undoes a sine? Its name is very lazy. Sine inverse. It looks like a sine with this little negative one exponent. Sine inverse undoes a sine. Cosine inverse undoes a cosine. And a tangent inverse undoes a tangent. Um, I want to show you how it works, and then I'm going to show you the shortcut. So I'm going to show you the long way. And then I'm going to show you the shortcut. Are you okay with that? Here we go. So here's what we have on the board right now. And you can just watch. You don't have to do this with me just yet. Okay. What undoes a sine? Sine inverse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sine inverse to both sides, right? Because whenever you do something to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other side. So the sine inverse of this side and the sine inverse of the right side. The sine inverse cancels out the sine. And if you don't believe me, I'll prove it to you. Where's my calculator? Here we go. All right, so I'm going to do sine inverse. And I have to use my functions button for that. Sine inverse of the sine any number less than 90. Any number you want. First one I say I'm using, 54. Oh my gosh, the sine inverse of sine of 54 ended up being 54. You can do it with any number less than 90. It'll work. You can do it with cosine. The cosine inverse of cosine, any number less than 90. Any number you want. Mohin, pick a number less than 90. Um, it's the way that it works in a unit circle. You'll understand why in higher math classes. <clears throat> 36. Look what happens. Cancels out. Right. Well, and here's the short answer for why does it have to be less than 90? Because the acute angles in our right triangle will always be less than 90. You can't have two 90 degree angles in a right triangle. That's the short answer. There's a big long like unit circle explanation, which you'll get to later. Okay, so I just proved to you that sine inverse and co undoes a sine, cosine inverse undoes a cosine, and if you really wanted to practice this, tangent inverse does undo a tangent. You don't want to use 90, and the reason is these only work for a right triangle and the acute angles in your right triangle. You can't have two 90 degree angles in a triangle, right, because those three angles would have to add up to 180, and if you have two 90 degree angles, 
they've already taken up your 180. You don't have any space for a third angle. Yay, good. Okay, so I already forget what I was doing. Wipe off board. Here we go. So I just proved to you that the sine inverse undoes a sine. So the sine inverse of sine x, that you're going to cancel out and you just get um, x. So now you have x equals sine inverse of 15 over 24. And that's what you'll type in your calculator. So back to the calculator. Sine inverse function sine and oops. Anyone else do that all the time too? All the time I do it. All right. Sine inverse 15 divided by 24. There you go. So x is about 38.7. Make sure you're rounding right that it's 38.68. That 8 in the hundredths place makes the 6 in the tenths place go up by 1. That's okay. Just double check your rounding. 38.7. Okay, so the sine inverse of 15 over 24, 38.7, there's your answer. Let me show you the shortcut. Okay, here comes your shortcut. I like the shortcut, but now that you know the long way, maybe the shortcut will make sense. You're allowed to take your function, okay, sine parenthesis equals fraction. You're allowed to take your angle and your ratio and flip flop them. So put the ratio in the parentheses and the x out here. But if you do that, you just inverted your angle and your ratio, which means you need to use the inverse of your function. Okay, so if you flip-flop, I call it the flip-flop inverse game. If you flip-flop your ratio and your angle, then you have to inverse or invert your function. It's a lot faster than doing the sine inverse to both sides and canceling them out. If you like doing it that long way, you're welcome to. But you're still typing this in your calculator. Sine inverse of 15 over 24. 38.7. Let's practice another one. Let's look at number two. Put an arc on your angle. Label the sides that are given with your O's, A's, and H's. So 8 becomes adjacent, and 11 is your hypotenuse. Very good, Rachel. All right, I've got an A and an H. Looking at my Soka Toa, I'm going to use cosine. Cosine of my angle equals my fraction. The angle is X. The fraction is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. <clears throat> I'm going to play my flip-flop inverse game. So I'm going to take my ratio and my angle, and I'm going to flip-flop them. And when I do that, I have to make sure I'm using the inverse. So in my calculator, I'm typing the cosine inverse of 8 over 11. And you get... Where am I? Number 2. 43.3. Thank you guys in the chat. I should just look at your answers. You're right. And I should be using my approximately here. But... <clears throat> All right. So we've seen three types of problems. We've seen a problem with the variable in the numerator, a variable in the denominator, and a variable in the angle. The setup is the same for all three ways. It's the solving part that changes. If the variable is in the numerator, then you just cross multiply. If the variable is in the denominator, we still cross multiply, but there's an extra division step. And if the variable is the angle, then we flip flop and inverse. Mm -hmm. Rachel, I love that you're playing with this right now. Yep, Mom, and you're right. Every time we're trying to find the angle, flip or just flip flop the x with the fraction. Yes. And I'm going to add to that and make your function an inverse. Yes, there you go. You got it. <laughs> All right, let's do um, a word problem. We've got about 10 minutes here. I just want to show you a word problem. Let's find one. Mm, I think number 17 was a good one. 
There we go. <laughs> There's number 17. A classic problem, right? We've got a ladder leaning against a wall. So we have a wall. I'm going to say it's a wall of the house. And a ladder leaning against it. Here's the ground. All right. A ladder leaning against a wall makes an angle of 75 degrees. I put a 75 there. If the foot of the ladder is six feet from the base of the wall, so this is six, what's the length of the ladder? It, clearly, you don't have to be a good artist. I am no Picasso. Wait until you see Monday's play pause it. Woo! You just got to be able to sketch this thing. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got a right triangle. We've got a 75 degree angle. We've got a six, we've got an X. And once you have that, you now turned this, like all these words into a simple problem. Solve for X. Oh, okay, good. Rachel doesn't even like Picasso. She likes my artwork better. <laughs> okay, so now we've got an angle. So I put an arc on it. And then we label our O, A's and H's. Six adjacent X hypotenuse. Maybe you write Sokatoa somewhere. You're going to be walking around the house today going Sokatoa. Sokatoa, aren't you? <laughs> All right. Yay. I'm seeing lots of cosines pop up in my chat. You're right. Cosine of the angle, the angle is 75, equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay. The setup is the same. For every type of problem like this, all you got to do now is figure out how do I solve it. Okay, well, X is in the denominator. That's great. We'll just cross multiply. But because it's in the denominator, we know that when we cross multiply, we're going to end up using an extra division step. So I get 6 equals X times the cosine of 75. Oh, cosine 75, I need you to go away. So I'm going to divide by it. Now it cancels, leaving me with just x, which is what I want. And we'll type 6 divided by cosine 75 into our calculator. And we get about 23.2. Uh-oh, did I do the wrong problem? No, 23.2. Rachel's just making sure I'm paying attention. Uh, what are our units? Feet, right? Because it's a length. There you go. All right, there's lots of practice problems in this for you to try. The answer keys are all posted to OMHS. Try problem, check your answer. If you don't get it, email me, join me in office hours, um, and I'm happy to help. <laughs> oh, that makes me happy. Can you guys see why this is like my favorite lesson of the year? You start out the day going, oh my gosh, I don't know any of this. And then you end the lesson going, this is easy. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And this is just the surface of Trig. Y'all, I love Trig. It's my favorite. <laughs> all right. Well, that's the end of the lesson, which makes me sad because I could do this all day. Um, definitely do some practice problems. And if you need some help, you know you can email me. Khalil, that makes me happy. Yep, you got it there, Mohammed. Because we don't offer just a trig course. Yeah. But I love geometry, too. I love geometry. If you ever want to know why I became a geometry teacher, come ask me in office hours. <laughs> Wonderful. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad to see you. Don't forget to catch up on any unit tests that you're missing, unit six and unit seven. You want to have those done. Hmm. Lauren, can you email me that question? Because I'm going to forget. Yeah. All right. You want to know I became a geometry teacher, really? <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me stop recording.